but next we have uh, William Wells from the Townhouse Gallery. Um, and I'll put, I'll put the slides on the show. <coughs> um, well, I'm finding this uh, presentation extremely difficult. In fact, I looked at the very first word I've written down on the paper is frustration, and I, I feel incredibly frustrated at having to try and put in 15 minutes 17 years, um, which is basically what I would like to do, and I can't. In fact, we're only two kilometers away, and I feel that in Trying to talk about a place like Townhouse through a presentation just is not the same experience as participating. You should be participating, and then I wouldn't even have to be here. Um, and also, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, this mind map is the only image I'm actually going to talk about because this is a, a map that we created a few years ago, and it's continually being revised. And it's basically what we do. It's to remind ourselves who we are, what we do. It's our identity, and it continually reflects. Um, if somebody enters into our space, we, we have to be thinking about who they can possibly interact with. Are they here in a workshop? Are they here as a part of an audience for an exhibition? Are they here to attend a film? Are they actually going to sit in the library and sit across from somebody and have this sort of serendipity effect and their lives will change? Are they actually going to walk across the streets and interact with the community at large? I mean, all of these things we have to constantly be thinking about. I think to continue to sort of revitalize who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Uh, so the, the rest of the images, in fact, are just going to be wallpaper. Purely and simply, far more interesting than what I'm going to say, so you can actually think, okay, well, that presentation was great. Um, I think, you know, townhouse. I always think of townhouse um, as basically a community, and I talk about it as a neighborhood, but really it's a it's a community of interests. And I think that downtown is a community of interests. And we've heard in the earlier panel where we p people have talked about the different types of interests in communities. We are, in fact, geographically, a working community. Um, and we are also an artist's community. We're a community of filmmakers. We're a community of um, street children. There is such a, a wide, vast variety of communities that sort of come to townhouse, make up our identity. And I think that's important. But you know, right in the very beginning, when I had the idea of creating a contemporary art space that would act as a platform for artists and back in 1998, who appeared to be wanting to reflect the city that they lived in rather than to reflect the past, rather than to reflect, in fact, the Red Sea coast um, or the pyramids. And these were artists that were actually engaged with the city that they lived in, the country that they lived in. And they did see that representation was nothing that they were actually had any relationship with. So I, I wanted a space purely and simply for them a platform, as I said earlier. And I found this incredible old building, by accident, by chance, down this lane that I'd been advised not to go to. Um, and it, this lane is a lane that you either, in the past, certainly in the 90s, you would try and avoid or you would rush through it if you had a chance. It's, uh, at the time, there was no lighting. The streets hadn't been paved. Um, it was a very dark, masculine lane. It, it appeared to be threatening. Um, one could only describe it as shadowy in appearance. Um, but, you know, in the daytime, when I actually went down there, and I, I, I don't know how this happened, but I stumbled into a conversation. I eventually found this one building, and I found this, we were, the building had been closed for, you know, decades, so we were able to open it up, and I saw the first floor of this building, and it needed an enormous amount of work. And I thought, okay, but this is a potential. So I went and started talking to the artists, and I had two problems. One, first of all, I'd seen the building, and I'd walked around the neighborhood in the lanes, and I got sort of a feel of what they did, but of course, it was completely wrong. And then I went and talked to the artists, and I said, listen, I found this space. Do you want to work with me? And they, asked, they said, absolutely not. 
You know, no, you've got to find a place that is respectable. You've got to find a place that actually people can drive up into their cars. I mean, the art community is quite a nice community. They're, they're going to come up and they're going to expect their wine at the openings and they're going to expect to be able to sit on the stairs, have their cigarettes. I mean, they certainly don't want to mix with that kind of community. And there's no street lighting and your roads are paved. I mean, how is this possibly going to work? Thanks, but no thanks, find another space. Unfortunately, I signed the lease, <laughs> optimistically. So now I had two problems. One, I had to be able to convince the neighborhood, the lane itself, to accept us. And then two, I had to get the artists to want to be accepted. Um, and how do you do this? I actually decided that there's to approach both of those communities in exactly the same way. And that is through conversation, observation, and um, engagement. And right at the very beginning, of course, you know, this two-pronged approach, I started to look at the community. And so hiring the community to be able to reha rehabilitate the space was the first step. That was engagement, conversation. Who are these people? This is a service lane. Who do they service? Oh, and the, through the, I mean, like, what is their history? I, what is the construct of the lane that I'm entering into? Uh, and I had to find out all of these things because, you know, if you sit down and you talk to somebody and say, well, what do you do? That's conversation. And they tell you, well, you know, I repair car seats. And you think, oh, that's great. But when you actually watch them repairing their car seats, you realize they have an enormous number of skills. They're using the stitching, they're using the cutting the fabric, they know the materials. They, they have a wealth of history and experience. And you think, okay, well, that's observation. And then engagement is, well, maybe possibly I can actually use you or artists can use those skills to actually do their object making. And when you stop and look at the lane at that particular moment in time, and the way I was able to convince the artist was, you know, what we have in that street, in that lane, under the shadows of those trees, in fact, is what you would call today a co-working space. A co-working space of artisans, glassmakers, carpenters, um, sign painters, metal workers, and even the car repair people all have skills. The coffee shop, conversational skills. All of these people, in fact, 17, 18 years ago, had created themselves a co-working space. And this co-working space, with all of the talent, was available for an art community. These people were actually able to provide the skills, the opportunity in the space, the street space, for these artists to create, to work together, I mean, to engage. I mean, that, that really was the, the tipping point, if you like. Getting the artists to acknowledge that, after, and after the first opening, that's exactly what happened. It was almost um, like, it was a, I don't even know how to describe it. You know, we turned on the lights for that opening, because the electricity had gone out, we managed to get it started. Everybody showed up out of curiosity, including the street. And it was as if all of a sudden, everyone recognized the potential of the other. The street certainly had one and one fundamental interest in what we were doing, and we can't deny it, and it was economics. They were not interested in what was going to go on in those spaces at that moment in time. They were interested in how could they possibly benefit from this activity taking place in their community. And believe me, they had a community, a community that they had set up and worked on for decades. They had their own currency when I first started. They, they relied on each other. They, two streets, you know, joining together at a junction, came from two, one came from Bola, one came from Saida Zainab, and they were intermarried, they were families, and they brought these different cultures, the Balak culture, the Saida culture, these intermarriages together and created this community themselves. And then all of a sudden, we're walking in there. And as I said, their own currency. When I first started, I actually started paying some of my wages in that currency, the Nabrawi Street Mark. And then, you know, that's a, a whole other story for another time. You know, um, But, okay, so that's basically how we started. And the... the the important thing that I want to talk about, I suppose, now, which you can see on the screen with all of the different activities, is the changes that have taken place. The change of the, the attitudes of the art community, the attitudes of the creative people that entered into that community. Um, how they 
originally stigmatized these people, as did our audiences, just by their appearance, by the very factor that they were a working class community. And so they were afraid of them. So there was this, in, in entering into this relationship, the community was actually looking at the community. Two communities observing each other, sussing each other out. Both were being observed. And both over a period of time, through more con greater conversation, they began to just understand how they could benefit one another. Over the years and through our expansion and our different activities, and we've moved from building to building, demanding, your, if you like, uh, answering the demands of the different communities. We employ people from our area. All of the people working in that lane, in that neighborhood, have sent their children on our workshops. Those children on the workshops have gone on and become makers. They have gone on in some cases, one of them, two or three of them actually even went to the White House and received awards from the president, the president, President Bush. Um, and other children have gone to France, and they've been jurors. You know, these are working children. The, 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 the children of the Macquaggy gone to France and worked on a jury for animation workshops. People working in the street have become involved. You can see in perhaps even one of the slides, I mean, the garages across the way. We work with them. When our spaces aren't big enough, they move the cars out. We move in. We can actually have a sound and light exhibition inside the space. It's we are a symbiotic relationship where, in fact, everybody benefits. It's about respect, understanding the skills of the neighborhood, understanding the skills of the artists. And it, it's really interesting, you know, I, I've watched this happen and I, I try and catch up with Townhouse. I try and catch up with our activities. I keep going back to that mind map all of the time, asking the staff to look at the mind map to see who we are, this identity, this, you know, this, what I'm talking about. And I, it's impossible to catch up. And it, I look right now and I'm thinking, what, what we're doing is we are creating an example, a very unique example of how we don't have to actually be afraid of people because of the way they look. We don't have to actually take people um, for what they, you know, this, this stigmatization that I was talking about. Um, and because the artists themselves were also stigmatized by the community, one has to remember that. But the community has changed, the audiences have changed, the number of people attending the lane has changed. Our road has been paved four times, if you can imagine it. And after the road is paved, then the, the government comes in and puts in lighting, digs up the road, puts in the lighting. And after the lighting put in, so another department comes in and digs up the road and puts in the water. So in fact, it looks exactly the same as it did in 1998. Um, again, it's about communication. And I, I suppose, I mean, I know my time is running out. I, I, I can't deal with this. Um, I do want to actually say, though, that investing in the arts, and one of the most unique things is in the last year, as funding for the independent art scene is sort of disappearing, and we all are aware of that. And the independent art scene depended primarily on um, funding from abroad and very, very generous uh, donations from people here in the city. As that foreign funding leaves, we have to look to alternatives. And we actually started to look for alternatives. And we've actually turned around and we've actually, you know, we said, look, at this is what we are. We didn't just start yesterday. This is, this is a, a huge achievement that all of the people that have worked in townhouse, all of the people that have walked through that street, taken part in our activities, this is a massive achievement. And they're all committed. They're, if I like to think of them as the alumni of the community. And we, we approached a real estate company called Sodic. You must have heard of it. Um, and they, we actually asked them, did you want to invest in us? And they said yes. They actually, surprisingly, I mean, we actually approached a lot of people, different corporations. But Sodic actually turned around and they said, yes, we will invest in you. We will invest in you and provide you with operational costs. But we want you to re come and build a community in one of our new cities. Now that's the challenge. So they gave us a space, they gave us a budget, they actually run, if you like, they contribute to the running of the engine downtown, and we are now faced with the challenge 
of trying to replicate within a working class neighborhood, neighborhood that same kind of symbiotic reaction relationship in a very wealthy, wealthy neighborhood. And trust me, they are much more difficult <laughs> to converse with, to observe, and to engage with. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, William.